In this video, we are going to cover the basics of using images for mapping values in Grasshopper. We begin with the previous exercise. Here we have created a grid of circles reacting to the attracting geometry. So we are going to replace this part of the definition where the values are mapped with another tool, the image sampler. You can find the image sampler under params input. We can load an image to the image sampler by double clicking and accessing the settings dialog box or we could simply drag and drop the image file directly onto the canvas. The image sampler allows us to evaluate and extract pixel data from an image at the sampling points. As you can see, the image sampler has a very thorough description under the Grasshopper help section. I advise you to at least skim through it. Since we are working with images, inevitably we have to talk in terms of pixels and resolution, but my current setup might not be suited for that. I have created a grid with a fixed step size, which is one unit, but having the ability to separately control the size of the grid and the point density, the resolution, would serve in this exercise better. Let's begin by separating the number of points and the size of the grid. I'm going to create a copy of the number slider, right click on it and change its bounds. Now I can separately control the number of points and the size of the grid, but I have another issue, the size of the circles. Let's use the expression component to establish a relationship between the radiuses of the circles and grid resolution. For simplicity reasons, I'm going to make the start of the domain stable at zero. We can take the end of the domain, say variable x, divided by the number of steps, n. This would give us the diameter for the circles. So we need to divide it by two to get the radiuses. I'm also going to change the input name to match the variables in the expression and let's test if everything works as expected. A quick warning here, be mindful of the resolution to avoid crashing Rhino. You can set a lower maximal value for this number slider. I have reorganized the capsules once again, this time using the panels and the hiding wire display. The next step is to create a relationship between the image and the circle sizes. So we want to use the output of the image sampler as scale factors for the circles. Let's connect the points to the image sampler and see what the output is. We get a list of RGB values. This data cannot be directly converted into scaling factors. Let's double click on the image sampler to access its settings. The channel option says the type of output values. I'm going to select the last one, the brightness channel. Let's click the preview button and look at the output panel. We get a list of single values between 0 and 1, 0 being completely black, no brightness, and 1 being completely white. Since we are here, we can also adjust other settings. I'm going to choose to interpolate between pixels and deselect auto update. The image sampler turned gray to signal us the channel used. And we can directly connect its output as scale factors. It's hard to spot any differences between the circles, so let's first try changing point density. We can now see some changes but there is no resemblance to the image used and also we get an error in the scale component. We have seen this error before, but it's not an issue for now. Let's go back and try changing the size of the grid. As I decrease the size, we notice a pattern emerge and as I move down to a single unit, we can finally recognize the image. So the image lays on the XY plane between the defined domain, which by default is between 0 and 1. We can change this domain, let's try 0 to 2. We are now sampling only a quarter of the image. If we change the size of the grid to match the image sampler domain, we are going to get the full picture. Let's access the image sampler settings again and look at the tiling options. If the input points exceed the image domain, 
The clamp option trims the values. The tile option repeats the image in all directions and the flip option leads and mirrors the image. Let's now talk about the image sampler output bounce. As I've said, the brightness channel outputs values between 0 and 1, but the actual output limit depends on the sampling point locations. So if we have very few sample points, we might not get the true brightness bounce. And if the image is very dark or very bright, we will not get the full possible brightness range from 0 to 1 as well. It's time to fix the transformation error. In this exercise, we're going to use the maximum component under Math Utilities. The maximum object compares the values in the A and B inputs and returns the greater of the two. So we are replacing all the values that are lower than 0 0.1 with 0 0.1. Just a reminder that we can also use remap numbers, setting a new target domain, or use graph mapper to change the relationship between the values. I'm going to stick with the graph mapper for now, and uh, let's talk a bit more about the image domain. I'm going to type in from a minus 10 to 10 along the x and the same along the y. Because the image domain is much larger than the sampling grid, I get this zoomed in effect. This could be useful if we need to divide the image when working with very high resolution projects. Working with squared images is quite straightforward in this regard, no matter the size, but what about dealing with different x-y ratios? In the image sampler settings box in the upper right corner, we have an option to use image pixel dimensions. I'm going to click that to see the original ratios. We can calculate the ratio dividing the y extent 337 by x extent 253. So if x domain ends at 1, the y domain ends at 1.4. I'm choosing the upper rounding here. We can see that the image is no longer skewed, the proportions are correct, but the grid doesn't sample the full image. There are a few ways how we could go about this, but I'm going to simply create a grid matching the image proportions. So I will need a separate value list for the Y domain. I'm going to delete the slider, defining the grid size and change the expression accordingly and uh, connect the new Y range as B input to the cross-reference. We get the full image this time and the ratios are correct. However, the spacings between the circles are skewed in the Y direction. The simplest way to make the spacings equal is to multiply the number of steps for the Y domain by the ratio of 1.4. To save space on the canvas, we can input the multiplication inside the range component. The x represents the variable input. Usually we will know the dimensions of the image and the scale of the resulting geometry, so we could manually input the sizes, making sure the domains match. However, if the output size is subject to change, the easiest and fastest way to adjust it is to scale the output at the end. In this case, we could leave the default center point, but for clarity reasons, I'm going to input the xy plane. So it's clear I'm using a single origin point for scaling. This brings us to another strategy we could use when working with the image sampler, and that is separating the sampling points and the target points. The domain of the sampling points must match the image sampler domain. I would recommend using normalized one, that is between 0 and 1. And the number of steps must match the target number. I'm also going to use the scribble to name these two groups for clarity. So we can easily adjust the target grid size, but we could also change its plane. For instance, let's change the y coordinates to z. All works well, except the circles are still drawn onto the XY plane. You could leave it like that or apply some other operation, but I will simply change their plane. 
In the component palettes under vector plane, I'm gonna grab the XZ plane and transfer the target points through it before supplying to the circle component. You can adjust the plane preview size in the main menu bar under display or turn off the preview. The next step is to remove, to filter out, the circles and the background. I'm using the black and white image with high contrast this time. I have already set the brightness channel for it, but it's not perfect, so the values are not binary. I'm gonna convert these numbers to Boolean values and let's filter the points using the sift pattern because it's important to keep the original data structure. Let's turn off the sift pattern preview to see the true results only. As you can see, it is not the best filtering pattern. In fact, we would be better off directly connecting the image sampler output to the sift pattern. Boolean converts any number that is not zero to true. So even though the number might be much closer to represent zero, it would still be converted to one. But the sift pattern automatically rounds floating numbers to their nearest integer value, thus returning more representative results. If you'd like to control the rounding of floating numbers to integers, we could use the rounding tool. It has the option to return the nearest, the smaller and the larger integer values. The Boolean conversion matches the ceiling output. Let's see how we could use other channels for filtering. Here I have another image with green, red and blue stripes. To access some image sampler options faster, we can right click on the capsule and select the options from the pop-up menu. Let's start by changing the filter from full color to red and input the values to the sift pattern. We can also try green and blue. That's the fast way to do it, but if we would like to use more than one channel, it might be more convenient to split the channels using split ARGB component. This tool has an option to output integer values as well as floating numbers between 0 and 1. For us, the latter suits better. We could also try using different channels to define scale factors for circles. The last thing I'd like to do is to assign custom colors to the geometry preview. Don't forget to turn off the preview of the scale component and use the full color image sampler for the custom preview. I'd like to emphasize the coloring and use surfaces instead of curves. Again, this could be a bit heavy to compute, so be mindful of the resolution. In the main menu bar under display, canvas widgets, we can turn on the profiler to see how long the surface creation takes and how heavy it is compared to the other operations on canvas. If it's quite heavy, it would be wise to use the data dam tool here so that we could make the changes to the definition faster and then control the data flow to create surfaces. This is it for this exercise. We will continue covering the use of image sampler in the following tutorials as well. So keep learning and I will see you in the next video.